In the face of honor, there is but one man who could deliver justice with such earth-shattering epic proportions. A simple man with humble beginnings, he stands alone above the rest in a world of inferior knowledge. His experience in the courtroom is unparalleled. His fragrance is unstoppable. He is pure, untamed justice personified. And he spews so much honor from every pore of its body, it's disturbing. He is Judge Rupert. Flanagan! Alright, that's it. Is this how you want to live your life? No! 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 Did somebody order a pizza? Go! Judge Rupert Flanagan is on the case. Prepare yourself. Renee Orbenklauf is suing the defendant for leaving her stranded in a foreign country where they don't speak a word of English. She says her ordeal was both horrible and unpleasant. Daryl Orion Flamperschmad denies the allegation and claims he has absolutely no idea why he's been brought to court in the first place. In whose favor will the mighty pendulum of fate swing towards? Find out today in this incredible episode of Judge Rupert Flanagan. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Rupert Flanagan presiding. You may be seated. I mean, you don't have to be seated, but you can if you want to. So, you know, it's optional. <sighs> Just a little courtroom humor there. Go! Well, Your Honor, the reason why I'm here today is because it all started on the evening of August 24th. Alright, tell I... me what happened. Well, Your Honor, I went outside to check on my mailbox and found a letter in my mailbox with no return address. So then that was when I decided it would be a good idea to take the envelope over to the post office and have them look at it for me because I wasn't about to open up an envelope from somebody I never heard of. Uh huh. So then the lady at the counter, she tells me, ma'am, she would have to go to work it out with her manager, but in the meantime, I should go to have a seat in the waiting room. Then she walked away, but then there was Hey Conrad. Hey Conrad. Hey Conrad. Could you not do that, please? Thank you. So I decided to go around and look for the waiting room she was talking about. While I was looking for the waiting room, I got lost. I found myself in a large room filled up with cardboard boxes and conveyor belts. But then I finally saw something that looked kind of like a chair, but I wasn't sure. It had a large sign that said, Displace here. So then I sat down on the chair looking thing, but then without warning, I was launched 80 feet into the air and I was stuffed inside a machine. Also, on my way to the inside of the machine, I got a bruise on my arm. I'm submitting this photo for evidence, Your Honor. And so I remembered I wasn't able to see anything because I was inside a cardboard box and I was in there for about a week. I do remember hearing the sounds of heavy machinery the whole time and some airplane noises. So then I decided to go to sleep, Your Honor. 
And when I woke up, I saw a blinding light in every direction, and in the center of it all was a head of a confused bearded man screaming at me in a weird language. I was in another country, and I don't remember the name of it. I know it started with a T, though. When Judge Rupert Flanagan returns, the plaintiff continues to describe her amazing journey. But what does all this have to do with that guy? Find out next on Judge Rupert Flanagan. Gardening weave. Gardening weave for your plaster. Judge Rupert Flanagan returns in this case of Orban Cloud versus Flampershmad. The plaintiff continues to describe her tale as Judge Rupert Flanagan calculates his judgment with amazing precision and intensity. Just uh, examining some of these pictures here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. All right, you can have these back. So am I right to assume you went to the post office and accidentally shipped yourself off to another country? Yes, you are, Your Honor. <sighs> Fair enough. All right, so please explain to me how all this relates to the defendant, Mrs. Uh... Well, Clough? Your Honor, I was incredibly difficult for me to communicate to anyone in this foreign country, but I managed to develop an entire language by myself which uses hand signals and gestures and everyone can understand it. That's impressive! See, look, I'll give you an example. Like, this means I would like some pizza and mashed potatoes. And so that's how I managed to survive for several weeks. I even managed to give myself a full-time job and a credit card. But I didn't know for the life of me how I was supposed to get back home to America, Your Honor. America! Woo! So tell us, what happened next? Well, Your Honor, as time went on, I started getting really interested in sailboats, and I was spending most of my spare time sailing on open seas, Your Honor. That's when a submarine appeared and- When we come back, the plaintiff finally finishes her story, but the defendant has a few words of his own. You won't believe what happens next when we return to Judge Rupert Flanagan. Hey man, let's go get some butter. All right! Presto Changeo! The case has reached terminal velocity as we draw nearer to the stunning conclusion. For a while, and so that's how I got back home. My son. A compelling right. story, ma'am. Truly inspiring. But you still haven't told me what all of this has to do with the defendant. Oh, well, back when I was stranded in a weird country. Uh huh. I met the defendant, and it had been a long time since I'd seen anybody that spoke English. He said he was on his way back to America. America! I asked him if I could go with him, and he said no. All right, that's all I needed to hear. For God's sake. Mr. Flappershmad, let's hear what you have to say. Well, you want to hear what I Didn't expect your voice to sound like that. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, okay, continue. So anyway, as I was saying, I don't remember any of this ever happening. I've never seen this woman in my entire life, and I've never even been outside of the United States of... America. I give you my word, Your Honor, this woman must have me confused with someone else. Oh yeah, why don't you tell the judge, Mr. Flarkin Schmarf? Yeah, that's what I'm doing, and it's Flapperschmad, not Flarkin Schmarf. Do you want to argue with me? No, I don't. I mean, I'm trying to defend myself. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Man, I don't even know you. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Dap, 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 dap. One at a time here. Is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Your Honor, this is an outrage. The plaintiff here obviously has nothing better to do. 
She has clearly mistaken me for somebody else. Mr. Flark and Smarf, let me ask you something. Do you have any evidence to further support your statement claim regarding the matter indicated during but not limited to the jurisdiction of this case substantially? What? Exactly. No, you don't. No, look here. I've been doing this for 25 years. My experience tells me for a fact that whenever somebody says somebody else is wrong, then that person is a liar and a cheat. I don't know how you sleep at night, Florkin Climber. You make me sick. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $27,000. That's all. What? This is totally unfair! I don't have that kind of money! Court session is adjourned, sir. You may step out. Your Honor, with all due respect... I said, get out! In an avalanche of honor, Judge Rupert Flanagan once again proves that he is a god among mortal men. Don't even think about missing the next episode, or else you will live to regret it. You people are willing to do anything for f***ing ratings. I remember this one time when I was watering my car when an eggplant truck that carries eggplants parked right across the street, and then my dog starts barking at me, and I says, calm down, FIFO.